What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for the haves and the have nots. This is season 8 episode 15 and the episode was titled Trespassing you guys. So we only have one more episode before the series finale and I'm just sitting here thinking to myself like how is Tyler Perry going to wrap this up? All of your, your, your burning questions answered. How? And so many people are going to die. Is everybody going to die in the season in the series finale? Like, what the hell is going to happen with this series finale? Like, I didn't I didn't watch the show If Loving You Is Wrong or whatever it's called, but I, I, I watched Ashley's review, and she wasn't too happy with it. Um, Yeah, I don't know how this is going to end, you guys, but we will definitely see. Um, But yeah, before we get into the review, you guys, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then what are we doing? Like, why are we still going out on this date? You, and at the end of it, I'm hitting with the bill. So hit that subscribe button, you guys. We are almost at 1,000 subscribers. I think we're at 970, so we just need 30 more. So yeah, if you guys would please hit that subscribe button. If you're definitely watching this video and you're not subscribed, do that for me, you guys. Now, with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and go ahead and talk about this episode of The Haves and The Have Nots. All right, you guys. So this episode, we open up with Benny. So Benny went over to Rihanna's house, right? Why did Benny go over to Rihanna's house in that bloody suit that he had on? Like, dude, you didn't, I mean, you went over to her house to have some wine. You didn't say, you didn't think to yourself like, hey, let me go, you know, take a little, a little, uh, a bath. Let me wash my, you know, wash my face, wash my body, wash my balls, wash, you know, wash everything and then get out of this ketchup stained shirt. But no, he did not do that. So when he gets there, Rihanna is talking to him, right? And Rihanna's, you know, once again, you know, remember in the last episode, Rihanna was spilling her being, you know, spilling her tea to Benny, right? So this time she's telling him about her mom, how her mom is in a home there and how most times she can't afford. She's like, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I don't either, Rihanna. So Benny opens up his arms. So I was like, come here. She's like, for what? He says, you need to be held. She's like, no, Benny. He says, come on. You need to be held. Come on. So Rihanna goes over there and he, you know, she holds, she lets him hold her. So then he tells her, you know, things will be okay. She says, I'm not so sure about that. He says, I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. So then she thanks him. And when she thanks him, she started kissing him. I'm like, oh, okay. So Benny's like, you know, I, I told you I'm going to let you get my body. Benny, shut up. So then she gets on top of Benny and she starts undressing Benny. I'm like, oh, are we actually going to see Tyler's tattoos? Because I've noticed that with this show, Tyler Lepley, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He's always covered up. He always has on long sleeve shirts. Tyler Perry has never shown his body because I didn't know I didn't even know he had tattoos until um, P Valley. That was when I knew that the man had tattoos. I'm like, whoa, where did these tattoos come from? I'm like, he has always got a button down shirt on, and and I mean, in Tyler Perry's world, Benny is actually the first guy that I know of that's never been you know half naked. Because even Christian Keys with the the cross tattoo on his chest. We saw that in one of the plays, but okay, hey. So Rihanna, like I said, she's undressing Benny, and then she goes down and gives him fellatio. I'm like, oh wow, that's what we're doing on the first date. And then I was like, can't even washed up. Interesting. Why is this man walking up to my car? Oh, he's looking at that sign. Um. So yeah, she started kissing him, and then, she, like I said, she went down. I'm like, oh, that's what we're doing. Okay, okay, Rihanna. I, I ain't mad at you. Get it how you live. Get it how you live. Where'd that charger go to? It might be in here. Um. So yeah. So then we see David, right? So David is talking to Leo, asking Leo who Tanner was. So he tells him he's like, we. Ran, I ran his plate, and his name is whatever his name is. His he gave him his full name, but we're just gonna say Tanner. So Jeffrey comes in, and you know, um. Um, David is asking him about Tanner. He says, "That's Jeff. You know, that's um, 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 um. What is Crispy's name? Justin's brother. He was like, what did he want? He was like, he wanted me to come to the services. He says, are you going? Jeffrey says, no. He says, I don't trust him. He says, good. You shouldn't trust him. I don't know when it comes to um Jeffrey. Jeffrey is dumb. So I, I'm I'm really hoping Jeffrey says what Jeffrey's saying." Is he's not going to the funeral? I'm hope 
but I don't even think it's going to be a funeral. The man just died. The man is still in the morgue. Then you have to take him to the unless they gonna even when, even if you cremated him, it's not going to be that quick and that soon. So I don't get just whatever. I'm not gonna harp on it. Let's move on. All right, you guys. So next up, Jim. Jim pulls up to see David. Right. So Leo tells David, Jim. I mean Jim, that you have to be announced. I'm Jim. You know who I am. I fired you. Jim tried to play hardball with Leo until Leo said, you know, Leo told him like, I'm stronger than you. I can stop you. And David, Jim was like, try it. Jim, you realize you only have one good arm, which I'm still trying to figure out why Jim still has this sling on when it's a flesh wound but okay we gonna play along with that one too so then jim tells um he you know leo um introduces him jim tells david to watch leo because you know the situation that happened with wyatt so then jim asked him um david for a hundred thousand dollars i was like oh wow a hundred thousand dollars okay because of the situation with celine but with the celine situation it's only fifty thousand so where's the other 50 going oh you just need some money Okay. Um, David, I hope you know your boy ain't got no money. I hope you know he's broke. But you know that. You know that. I mean, you know that Hannah is the power of attorney. So you know that nine times out of ten, you ain't getting that money back. Especially as long as Catherine is in jail. But okay. Whatever. But yeah, you know, he tells him he's in this situation because of his bitch wife and Celine. So David tells him he'll loan him the money. I'm like, Really? How are you going to get your 100 k back? But okay, I, 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 I guess let's roll with the punches. I, I mean, I, I don't know. So then David tells him that Mama Rose is retired and moved down to Florida, right? So he's like, how long has this been? He says she moved down there about a month ago. I'm like, a month ago? A month ago? How? Okay. Mama Rose retired about a month ago, he said, right? Then I started doing a calculation in my head. A month ago, it ain't even been a month that Catherine's been in jail. Has? No, 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 no. Because Mama Rose Let's think of the timeline. Mama Rose. Okay, I got it. How has it been a month? Let's just let's just let's just play flashback, okay, you guys? Because I'm actually remembering it now as I think about it. Remember, Mama Rose went to jail, right? Mama Rose was in the cell next to Catherine, right? Mama Rose got out of jail, right? Mama Rose after she got out of jail, Mama Rose retired. Mama Rose went to Florida. Catherine has not been in jail for no damn month. Catherine hasn't been in jail a month. We're going to talk about Catherine, too. But I was just thinking about that. I'm like, it has not been a full month. Maybe for us in the real world. No, it ain't even been a month for us. This has been... How long has this been? When did this storyline play? This storyline has played out since the since season seven, right? Or the beginning of season eight. Whenever, but I, it's not been a. It, it can't be a month. I, I just don't believe that, because like I just played out for you guys. Mama Rose went to jail. Remember, Vinny shot that cop, who he said tried to commit suicide, but a forehead, but to the forehead, and it was point blank. Okay. So then you know, um, he tells him that you know Vinny is in charge. And that he should pay Vinny $100,000 to, you know, kill Candace. And I was just like, really, David? That was so stupid. You want him. So you're going to loan him $100,000. He just told you he in bed with Veronica and Celine. And the other 50 was for him. So you're gonna have to give him another hundred thousand because then he said we'll make it two hundred thousand. I was like, exactly. But David is okay with two hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, again, David, where are you gonna get this money? Like, I guess David, I mean, I guess Jim's gonna give you an IOU because Jim ain't got it. 
but whatever 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 so i'm gonna move on you guys <coughs> what do we talk about what have we talked about so far all right so let's talk about hannah real quick Catherine, here we go with Catherine, guys. I even tweeted this. How many phone calls has how many phone calls does Catherine get? Like every episode we see Catherine calling Hannah. And from what it looks like is Catherine like she's still in the tank. And you know what? I'm not going to even go there, but I'm just still confused. How many phone calls has she got? How many phone calls does one person get? I know when you get to in, get in jail, they give you your one phone call, right? But after that, well, you know what? You can call, but not not as much as Catherine's calling, because Catherine is calling on the hour. It's like she's calling every hour on the hour, and I know you can't do that because when you're in jail, you have your allotted phone time. That much I do know. You have your allotted phone time. And it's not every hour. I think you get two. I think you might be able to get two throughout the day. I think you get one in the a.m. And one in the p.m. If I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know. So then, like I said. So Catherine has called Hannah, right? So Catherine is telling Hannah not to go over there where Broderick is. Instead, send Jim. And then she asks Kath, um, Kath, Hannah to call him a three-way, right? So she does. So she tells him, you know, you need to get over there to the um, to Wyatt's apartment. He was like, why? She's like, because Wyatt is there. He was like, how do you know that? She was like, I just do. So then he says, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm like, she's telling you your crackhead son is at that apartment and not in the in the hospital. And you don't, but you know what? It's Jim. We know who Jim, how Jim is and we know Jim don't care. So then Jim wants to insinuate that Hannah and Catherine had something going on and that she needs to tell her girlfriend to release some money to him. And he says, he's, you know, he'll, he'll go over that once she tells him, tells Hannah to release the money to him and how she knows about Wyatt. Jim, shut up, period. That's all I need you to do is just shut up and worry about that flesh wound that you got. Let's move on. All right, you guys. So Benny and Rihanna, right? Benny and Rihanna, Rihanna had sex, right? So after they had sex, Rihanna starts to feel bad. I'm like, girl, really? You wait until after you've had sex with him? And then you wait until after you had sex with him to ask him about himself? Then you wait until after you had sex to ask him about STDs? Girl, what? Where would I do that at? Now, I will say, though, one thing I will point out, I was looking at it. Because you guys remember, I was just talking about the fact that we have never saw Tyler without his shirt on, right? And, I, you know, I, we've always seen him covered up. In long sleeve shirts and I guess that was in, in a way to cover up his tattoos so they put some makeup on his tattoos and the makeup was not that good because I'm like I can still see his like on this arm I can see his sleeve like that is a hard his sleeve is probably got to be hard to cover that up because you could still literally see his sleeve unless you get like you know the perfect you know I mean Tyler Perry can afford the professional makeup but that makeup was just not that good but I was just in there thinking to myself like really Y'all having all these conversations after you guys have just had sex? You want to know if he has an STD? You want to know how many people he slept with? You want to know how many people she slept with? I'm like, really? These are the questions we're asking after we've just had sex? Cool. I don't care. Moving on. Broderick. Broderick is talking to someone. I didn't really realize who that was. You guys can let me know in the comment section who that man was. If we know him, I don't remember him. But his friend is telling him, get out of the loft. Broderick is like, uh, <laughs> not going anywhere. I'm like, okay, buddy. He's like, you're dealing with the criers. I'm like, exactly. This family is nuts. So, um, so you guys also might hear a lot more. So at the park, they are cutting the grass and he is coming right up beside my car. So he's talking about squatters rights. I'm like, again, I don't know if you want to go up against, I mean, a lawyer. Jim is a lawyer and a, was, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. So then Hannah comes in, right? Hannah comes in, and not long after Hannah was there, Jim came in. Jim asks Broderick, where's Wyatt? Broderick says he doesn't know where Wyatt is, which that's probably the truth. Who, who the hell knows where Wyatt is at this point? Then Jim asks him, why are you here? Oh, I'm cleaning up. He says, oh, you're cleaning up, huh? 
Then why is your bag over there? Broderick couldn't come up with a good enough lie. Could not come up with a good enough lie. Oh my God. Oh my God. I did not know that that scene was. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right, you guys, we're going to pause here and we're going to talk about a scene that you guys know how I feel about it. All right, you guys, let's talk about Charles, Landon, Oliver, and Conley. I'm still confused about this storyline. When it comes to this storyline, more specifically, I'm confused about it because Tyler Perry springs this in ever so randomly and we don't ever get much out of this out of the scenes with Charles with Landon with Oliver with any of them we don't get much out of the scenes so I'm always thoroughly confused when we get a scene with these people so Landon calls Candace right and you guys remember Landon wants Candace to do this interview and um Candace is still very reluctant now Oliver meant not Oliver but Landon mentioned to her he knows about you know her taking Jim's money he knows that where she's staying at I'm like um stalker like I will call 911 with the white woman tears like oh my god someone is stalking me I need help like I would really do that like when you tell me that you know where I'm staying the fact that you know where I'm staying at is is, is, it's really bothersome for me so he tells her some things that she needs to do with the money she's like I've already taken care of that so then he says, well, how about you come to D.C.? She tells him, no, I'm not coming to D.C. to see Ch um, Charles, and I'm not coming to D.C. to do no damn interview. Absolutely not. So she hangs up on him. And um, so at this point, Charles comes in, right? Because they're getting ready to head to the White House. And then not long after Charles comes in, um, not long after Charles comes in, um, Conley comes in. I'm like, oh, God. Like, what the hell it just didn't make any sense to me so Landon went to his office right Oliver's in Landon's office the back and forth with Landon and Oliver is actually really annoying it's it, it, it comes off as pent up sexual aggression it's, it, it, it seems as if Oliver and Landon need to have sex with one another to get over it and Adrian why the hell are you looking at me like, you just keep looking back with your girlfriend. Go on, Adrian. One of my class, somebody I went to school with is just looking dead in my car. He walked by once and he keeps looking in my car. Um. So Oliver says that um, Conley has an angle, but he has no proof of what Conley's angle is, right? So Landon tells him, don't come back to him without any proof. So then Conley goes to um, Charles once again, trying to pitch this, I, I don't know what's, it's a, like a senator or a, a cabinet member. I think that's what, I think he's trying to pitch somebody for Charles's cabinet, right? And he's pushing, ex, I mean, he's really pushing hard, like a drug pusher, pretty much. So then once, once um, he leaves, Landon comes in. Landon asks Charles, do you know why he's pushing so hard? And Charles was like, no. And he says it's because of a pipeline that goes through somewhere. I guess it goes through his property. And Conley can stand to make a substantial amount of money from his situation. So then, as you know, they're getting ready to leave to head toward the White House. The phone rings. And it's Candace. So Oliver doesn't answer the phone. Charles answers the phone and says that, you know, you know, um, they talk. She says, you know, she wasn't ready to talk to him. And he tells her he misses her and he would love to see her. And she says, I'm not so sure about that one. Because she says, I'm not I'm not about to be your secret. I don't want to be I don't want to sneak in, sneak out, any of that stuff. And I actually understand where Candace is coming from. And he tells her, No, it, it won't be any of that. He tells her, Come see me. She says, You know what? I'll think about it. And then she drops the bomb that she is pregnant with his child. And she says, It's your child, and you're the only man that I had unprotected sex with. And he tells, um, he tells, what's his name, uh, whatever his name is, Landon. Let's move on and wrap the episode up. All right, you guys, so we're wrapping the episode up. So, Madison. Madison went over to David and Jeffrey's house, right? 
And Jeffrey was like, I thought you were supposed to be working. He says, I was, but someone threw piss on me. And, um, you know, he was choked out. He was like, wow, really? And he says, your boy Wyatt did that to me. And then he escaped and he took some prescription medication that could potentially be lethal. So, um, Jeffrey goes upstairs. Jeffrey goes to talk to David, I guess. Leaving, um, you're leaving Madison downstairs. Leo comes in and he tells Madison that Jeffrey's friend is there. And Madison was like, what friend? He says, Wyatt Cryer. So, you know, um, he was like, you got, um, you know, you got, mil you got military training, you know, you got some kind of training, right? We can restrain him, right? He says, yes, I do. He says, okay, well, I want you to restrain him. Bring him in. Restrain his ass. So Leo does bring him in and Madison realizes that Wyatt is high, right? So at this point, they like, you know what? You need to stay here. Like, we ain't letting you go. So Wyatt... I don't know why Wyatt thought he was a match for Leo. Even if Wyatt wasn't high, he wouldn't be a match for Leo. If Leo is a trained, you know, trained official, why did you think you had any any chance of beating his ass? But okay. But Leo managed to take him down, right? So then we move over to Candace. This scene was really odd to me. I was like, is this real? So there was a knock at Candace's door. She's like, who is it? And the person never said who they were. She was like, go away or I will blow you away. And, you know, she's having the, her, seen this person having a conversation back and forth. So then the person opens the door and I was like, oh, hells no. I was like, who? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, I thought Oscar was dead. Candace thought the same thing, too. She's like, you're dead. He was like, you didn't do a good job. She's like, I pushed you from 30. I pushed you out the 30th floor i saw you when you fell he was like you didn't do a good job i'm like how in the hell did she not do a good job pushing you from the 30th floor i was like where in the hell did oscar come from and then he says we're all here i'm like we're all here i'm like is this a hallucination because when he said we're all here so let's think about because you know it immediately made me think about people that candace has had dealings with that are dead Cause I was like, oh my God, if war comes into the, I'm like, if war comes in that room, if Erica comes in that room, if like, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, if he, he said, we're here, I'm like, war is behind him. And he, I was just thinking that war is behind him. War, uh, Q, war, Q and, um, Erica. And Oscar. Well, technically, Candace didn't get Erica killed. That was Veronica. That was Veronica. But she was doing Candace's dirty work with um, David. But that's, I mean, I feel like Erica would still have an issue. Well, Erica did have an issue with Candace before she died. So I would assume that it would be Erica too. All right, you guys. But that's the episode. Um, I still can't believe that we're one episode away from the, fin the series finale. I just wonder how they're going to wrap everything up. I don't feel like... I really don't think that they are. Like, I don't believe that everything is going to be wrapped up in two episodes. I don't. But that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Be sure to like the video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share the video. Until the next time, you guys. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys do decide to do, be safe in doing so. Be blessed, you guys. Um, socially distance, you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.